Hey YouTube, welcome back to My Financial Focus. In this video, I wanted to talk about what's currently happening in China and why I think that this could present a good buying opportunity uh, for me. So if this is something you guys are interested in or other videos like this, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, keep in mind, I'm not a financial advisor, so if you're going to invest in the stock market, please do so at your own risk and do your own due diligence. And let's get right into it and not waste any time. So uh, what's going on in China right now is the Chinese government uh, for the last couple of months has been uh, regulating uh, some of their businesses and uh, implementing some government intervention. And we can see that this article released September 8th, 2021 says China bans private tutors from giving online classes. This is sort of a follow-up um, from the Chinese government in their regulatory efforts of Chinese businesses and more recently the uh, private educational uh, services business, uh, specifically tutoring. So we can see right here, it says September 8th, uh, China on Wednesday banned private tutors from giving classes online or in unregistered venues such as residential buildings, hotels, and coffee shops, ramping up its efforts to stamp out all for-profit tutoring. Authorities this year banned for-profit tutoring in subjects on the school curriculum in an effort to ease pressure on children and parents. Uh, media has reported this week on various ways parents and tutors have been trying to circumvent the rules, including, including how some agencies were advertising live-in uh, live tutors who command salaries up to 30,000 yuan, uh, 4,650 dollars a month. And this is a bit of a follow-up to um, what China has uh, previously been doing, as you can see this article posted in August 16th, 2021, um, where basically, as you can see right here, it says, Chinese education firms are no longer allowed to publicly list, raise foreign capital, or be profitable. And um, this is basically um, an effort by the Chinese uh, Communist Party to sort of remove some inequality between um, how wealthy families had a bit of an advantage in being able to spend their money on private tutoring sessions um, to help their children better compete and be more prepared for uh, Chinese exams. Uh, when they're uh, competing against other students that come from poorer families who don't have enough money to pay for these uh, tutoring businesses that are uh, that were very lucrative businesses because uh, they were in in very high demand a very high demand area which is uh, private education and tutoring um, and also if i scroll down a little bit right here we can see Investors in the United States are less optimistic and feel there is too much uncertainty with Chinese policies. In recent months, China's government has launched antitrust investigations into tech giants like Alibaba and Tencent, removed rideshare app Diddy in app stores over a cybersecurity review, and ordered food delivery apps to improve working conditions. So this has definitely been a bit of a long play by China's government to uh, regulate some of the businesses in their country. But I wanted to talk about why I think that this could uh, be seen in a different light and um, instead of being a negative, could be seen uh, from an investor's point of view as a potential positive and uh, uh, buying opportunity. So. Right here we can see in this article it says why this investor keeps buying alibaba stock as it falls and it reads as china continues its crackdown on big tech companies many investors are selling or avoiding chinese stocks but some investors with a healthier appetite for risk are salivating at the potential value investing opportunity green who is a guy in this article who is buying alibaba stock has known the management team at alibaba for a long time in fact, he first invested in Alibaba when it was below $7 per share, he said. Um, as, a sh as the stock fell sharply amid Chinese regulations, Green started buying at around $210 per share. Clearly, we were early, he said. He recently bought a bunch more at around $157 per share. He has no clue where the stock's going to go in the next six to nine months. But 
he thinks that over the next like three to five years these things are much higher than they are today green said china won't drive its companies into the ground because they want to conquer the world but the country wants the big internet companies to know that they are not bigger than the communist party and this is something similar to what uh kathy woods the ceo of arc invest said when she was talking about china she said that um, arc invest isn't too sure whether or not the recent economic conditions in china are going to be enough to uh, sway arc invest away from um, from investing in china she thinks that uh, it could be a good buying opportunity because uh, china does want to have the biggest economy in the world they want their economy to be bigger than the economy of the united states and it wouldn't be in their best interest if that is their goal to uh pretty much just shut down these enormous tech companies like alibaba and we can see from alibaba's chart that uh, over the last uh, good amount of time over the last year we can see that their stock has uh fell from a high of around 317 down to what is now a share price of 168 dollars per share um, and I wanted to talk about why I think this could be a good buying opportunity for me by uh, going over some analyst research and also looking over their financial statements. So we can see that um, analysts believe that on the low end uh, that uh, a good um, uh, rating or a good uh, price target for Alibaba would be uh, at the low point $190 per share and at the high end $336 per share. And considering their share price is currently sitting at $168 per share, pretty much no matter where it goes, if it reaches the low point or the high point of these uh, price targets, that would still be a pretty good return on investment. And if it were to return to its uh, high point in uh, 2020 of $317 per share, then that would be almost a 100% return. So looking at their financials, we can see that they have a very strong set of financial statements. Their income statement shows consistent revenue growth from $39 billion up to $109 billion in 2021 and gross profit increase uh, of almost uh, double from, or more than double from $22 billion to $45 billion. And their net income has also increased uh, and doubled from 2018 to 2021 from 10 billion dollars to 22 billion dollars um, so they've obviously been growing quite a bit um, which is for in, in my opinion why i think that this uh, current downtrend in their stock uh, isn't really justified by their financial statements and is obviously a shock from over regulation from the communist party and could be seen as a good buying opportunity um, for me as an investor. Um, so we can see from their balance sheet uh, in 2018, their uh, total assets were 119 billion and in 2021, they were $257 billion and their total equity has now uh, doubled, uh, almost tripled from uh, 58 billion in 2018 to 143 billion in 2021. And their financial ratios show that their gross profit margin is 41%, their net profit margin 21%, and they are an extremely liquid business, uh, having a current ratio of 170% and a cash ratio of 137%. So I think that Alibaba uh, is a very good buying opportunity for me, and I'll definitely be keeping my eye on it. And two other stocks that I'm looking out for are NetEase and Niu Technologies. NetEase, for those of you who don't know, um, we can look at a quick little description of what their business is. Um, they were founded in 1997, um, and they uh, focus on mobile games, cloud music, media advertising, email, live streaming, online education, and e-commerce. The company develops and operates some of China's most popular PC client and mobile games and it partners with global leading game developers like Blizzard Entertainment and Mojang. So I think that um, by looking at their uh, uh, analyst price targets, um, you guys might see why I think this could potentially be a good investment. Uh, on top of the fact that the uh, economic conditions in China are sort of steering 
uh, Chinese stocks downward. Um, analysts uh, say that price targets for net ease on the low point are around $120 per share and at the high point $150 per share and their current share price is at $88 so that's a pretty substantial increase that would be about a 50% increase on the low end and about a 100% increase on the uh, higher end of these price targets. Their financial statements aren't as impressive as Alibaba's but they are still very impressive. Um, their total revenue has almost doubled um, from 6 billion in 2017 to 11 billion in uh, 2020. Gross profit has increased. Net profits have fluctuated a little bit. They fell from 2017 to 2018, but generally over the uh, last couple of years, they've increased from uh, 1.6 billion to 1.8 billion. And their balance sheets show that their total assets have doubled over the years from 10 billion to 21 billion. And their total equity has fluctuated a little bit, but has over the years generally increased from 7 billion to 12 billion dollars from 2017 to 2020. And their financial ratios show that their gross profit margin uh, for 2020 was 53%, with their net profit margin being 16% and their current ratio being 231%. So they are obviously a very liquid business. Um, and this is another business that I think has um, been affected by the recent uh, economic conditions in China. And over the five-year chart, they're up over 100%. And over the one-year chart, they're down 4%, three months down 21%. And we saw from those analyst ratings that um, at the current share price, this could uh, be a good buying opportunity for this uh, business in China. So last business that I want to look at is Niu Technologies. They focus on the design and manufacture and sale of electric bicycles and motorcycles. And I recently made a video about Niu Technologies and I went into a lot more detail in that video um, about potential opportunities for them and their financial statements. So um, I won't go into it too much in this video since I already went over in that video. You can go check that one out if that's something that interests you. But to keep a long story short, they have a small market cap of $2 billion. Um, their analyst ratings aren't that impressive, but they are a newer business uh, with a smaller market cap. So it's only natural that they won't have as much analyst coverage, which I see honestly as a benefit because the less people who know about the stock when I buy into it, the better, since the more people who learn about it, the higher the share price will go because more people will buy it. and. Um, there will be less supply, more demand, so prices will go up. And also, these are their financial statements. We can see that uh, they've grown pretty substantially with gross profits of $8 million in 2017 to uh, $85 million in 2020. They weren't profitable in 2017 and 2018 and recently became profitable in 2019 and 2020. They have strong balance sheets with their total assets growing from 77 million to 280 million. And um, total equity, they used to be negative, but now they are positive uh, $151 million from a negative of $49 million in 2017. They have strong financial ratios, um, current ratio 180%, cash ratio 139%, so they're very liquid. Uh, profit margins aren't that impressive, but they are a newer business. And I think for a business as small as new with only a $2 billion market capitalization, I think this is a pretty impressive financial uh, statement. So this would definitely be a business that I'll be looking out for. And I'm not sure which of these businesses between new NetEase, Alibaba, um, that I'm going to be focusing on uh, in the long term. I definitely think over the next five years um, at these current share prices, they're a little bit displaced and don't really represent the uh, intrinsic value of the businesses in my opinion. So I'll be looking out for them and keeping up on the news in China um, just to see if uh, these are good buying opportunities for me. So hopefully you were able to find some value out of this video. If you did, uh, remember to leave a like, it really helps me out a lot and subscribe to the channel if you are new and are interested in more content like this. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.